There's been a lot of interest in GMK Tech's M7 Mini PC, and the review is finally here. This new generation Mini features a big redesign over the previous effort, yet it's still one of the more affordable Mini PCs with some interesting features. GMK Tech's M7 uses an unusual AMD processor we haven't had a look at yet. Yep, another notch to add to the old belt. What are we talking about again? I was sad to see the metal case get dumped for plastic with the M6, but the M7 brings back the glorious metal, and once again, I get the premium feel tingling down my spine. Or is that something else? Maybe I should see a doctor. The overall aesthetic is also improved. The translucent top plastic lid looks cool, and is something a little different. The final thing I wanted to point out on its exterior is the protruding power button. Not a common feature amongst the couple hundred or so mini PCs I've looked at over the years, as it's usually flush with the case. But this one, dare I say it, is very satisfying to press. Yes, you may be rolling your eyes right now. The beating heart in this one, or brain I guess, is AMD's Ryzen 6850H Pro, which is basically a 6800H with added security features and a tiny performance penalty as a result. The 6850H is an 8-core 16-thread CPU with Radeon 680M graphics. Jim Ktex M7 is available as a bare bones only on the official website, starting at $300. US The 1TB model is on special at the moment. On Amazon.com, the 512GB storage 16GB RAM model is $370. US. Accessories remain unchanged from the M6 or any other recent GMK Tech Mini. All you need to do is plug in your monitor, mouse and keyboard and you're ready to rumble. Earlier I did mention Oculink is included, which provides a much better eGPU experience than USB 4. There's also a couple of USB 3 10 gigabit and an audio jack. The back has a couple of USB 2, HDMI 2.1, which GMK Tech says can go up to 8K 60Hz, along with DisplayPort 2.0, dual Intel 2.5 gigabit LAN, and another USB 4 port. Both USB 4 ports were tested with a USB-C monitor, and both worked fine with power delivery and display. With the M7, you can use a total of four displays. Intel's Wi-Fi 6 AX200 is also included for wireless networking. The M7 opens with a twist of the top lid, then four screws. Dual channel DDR5 4800 is included, which is the maximum sodium memory speed for this CPU, and there are two M.2 Gen 4 slots for storage. Although with the pre-build, only a Gen 3 drive with heatsink is included. Underneath the SSD is the M.2 Wi-Fi card. Oh, and I think these Wi-Fi antennas could have been raised higher to sit flush with the case, or just above it for better reception. So, having two NVMe drives is cool, but you know what's even cooler? Three NVMe drives. Finally, an external enclosure using the 40 gigabits bandwidth to give you glorious Gen 3 NVMe transfer speeds. What I like about the Zyke drive is not only that it has a large heatsink as its case, since the smaller ones often overheat, but also that it's covered in protective acrylic on the outside, so you don't scratch up the aluminium. Another cool feature is the bonus smaller stowaway USB-C cable that fits into the case. Okay, to get the Zyke drive working, pull off the cover and add your own M.2 NVMe drive and twist the toolless rubber to lock it in place. Next, we peel off the thermal pad protector and close it up. It's that easy. Plug the Zyke drive into your USB 4 port. Right click the drive in Disk Management, choose Properties and then go to Policies. Select Better Performance and enable write caching on the drive. And there we have it. Excellent Gen 3 speeds on the sequentials. I thrashed the drive with my usual test for 15 minutes and the maximum temp recorded was 50C on the drive and 56C on the controller. So, nice and cool. Goodbye 10 gigabit SSD. Hello, Zyk Drive. It's available for 119 US dollars, but my lovely audience can get it for 20% off with the unique coupon code in the video description, bringing it down to $96. And with that, we continue on with the M7 Mini PC. If you go with a pre-build option, Windows 11 Pro is included. Those wanting the Penguin will be happy to hear there were no issues with the Ubuntu test off a USB drive. Bluetooth range is nothing great when testing with an audio speaker for a stable connection with no artifacts. I'd say it's below average. Unfortunately, the Wi-Fi range test at 12 meters or 39 feet using the 5G band failed. 
You can see the network problem notification in the top right corner, warning of high ping, which showed for almost the entire game session. The only way to fix this is to shorten the distance between the mini and router, or use the 2.4G band, which worked better. Alright, let's move on to the benchmarks. The 6000 series lagged behind Intel CPUs in single core performance when released, and you can see that here. The 6850H Pro has a much better result in multi-core, pushing it above the middle of the stack. There's a performance mode in the BIOS which ups the power limit, but it didn't do a whole lot in Cinebench. Geekbench 6 confirms the lowest single core result. For multi-core, it's not as favourable since data is missing for the lower end units, but it performs close to the 6900HX as we saw in Cinebench. H.264 video encoding is again around 6900HX level. And the same with AV1 encoding. No surprises here. In 3DMark's DX11 benchmark, the M7 is slightly behind the 6900HX due to that CPU having a 200MHz GPU clock advantage. Also, check out how it compares against Intel's Core Ultra 7 in these benchmarks, as we're going to compare them in actual games shortly. Time supply, again, a slight decrease as expected, and the Ultra 7 is tying in first place. The newer Steel Nomad test shows the same as in Time Spy. Going forward, I'll be using 3D Mark Storage Benchmark, and we have our first score, which doesn't mean anything just yet. So, here's the Crystal Disk Mark result as well. It's a good performing Gen 3 drive in the sequential read and writes. Okay, so we're looking at how the older generation Radeon 680M holds up against the current gen Intel Arc Integrated Graphics in minis as of this video. And yeah, a mini with an Intel chip costs a lot more. Starting with the eSports games and we're using the performance mode. Counter Strike 2 is a win for the Intel CPU, but not by much. Same with League of Legends. And a much bigger win in Valorant, which is a very CPU heavy title. In Dota 2, again, Intel's current gen Core Ultra 7 is ahead of the older Ryzen CPU. I surge. But what about with GPU heavy AAA games? No image upscaling, just native rendering. In Ghost of Tsushima, it's a small win for the M7. In Robocop, both are pretty much identical. In Hellblade 2, it's a slight win for the M7. Now for something that was just released. God of War Ragnarok runs far better on the M7. It also wins with Space Marine 2. So even with less memory bandwidth than the Intel Mini, the Ryzen 6850H still comes out ahead in GPU heavy gaming. And for the newer AAA games, you'll need to use image upscaling and or frame generation where available to get a decent frame rate. But for these benchmarks, we were just testing raw performance. Emulation is another area the latest Intel chip wins due to the CPU being the bottleneck.
Another gaming option with the M7 is to use an eGPU with one of the USB 4 ports. Windows was giving me errors for both ports with my Razer Core X eGPU. I got it working by removing the maximum power saving setting for PCI Express Link State Power Management. Oculink eGPU detection worked without any issues using my OcuP4 V2 dock I bought from AliExpress, linked in the video description. Although I didn't get display until the GPU driver was installed. So plug your display cable into the mini first and install your GPU driver if you don't get any display output from the basic Microsoft display driver in Windows. I'm using an RTX 3080 on my Oculink dock which will get you the best gaming experience due to the higher bandwidth available over USB 4. Next we check out the multimedia side of things. Latency Mon is a new addition showing how well the Mini holds up for audio production. I'm running it for a minute and the results are just fine. The M7 also handles a 4K video project pretty well in Adobe Premiere. There's the odd bit of lag when scrubbing across the timeline, but the Ryzen 6000 series high-end mobile chips started really providing a good 4K video editing experience. Intel's QuickSync is still better at decoding video, but you can't have everything. I know, I've tried. When you mash the delete key on startup, you'll enter the BIOS. In the main section, you can select your power mode. In advance, you'll find wake on LAN and auto power on right at the top. Hardware monitor allows you to mess with the CPU fan curve. The integrated graphics is set to 3GB by default. I recommend setting it to 4 if you plan to play the latest AAA games. In AMD CBS SMU common options, there's also fan controls and you can manually set the power limit if you prefer that over the main profiles. Idle power draw of 9 watts is better than average and the default balance mode wins out in the maximum power draw results. Performance mode used substantially more for little performance gain. Maximum CPU temp is on the lower side, though thermal throttling kicks in with a performance profile when stress and results in small gains. Fan noise has drastically been reduced over the M6 predecessor. While it's still audible at idle, load fan noise is down a lot, and the result is better than average for the default balance mode. Inside the Mini we saw the SSD has a heatsink and fan blowing on it, so no surprise it's running cool. Ok, so conclusion time. GMK Tech's M7 provides a complete redesign of the previous M6 Mini PC and improves upon it with a nicer looking box. It's made of metal again for the premium feels and has lower fan noise and Oculink support. However, the wireless range could be better, only a Gen 3 storage drive is included and the performance mode doesn't add a whole lot of performance. As we've already seen, AMD's 6000 series with Radeon 680M graphics still holds up well, even against Intel's newer and pricier Meteor Lake CPUs, although it does depend on what type of workload you're using it for. Jim Ktex M7 is a nice value option, especially if you're going to use some of the features such as Oculink or the dual Gen 4 M.2 slots. You can find this mini PC linked in the video description if you're interested and I'll also be reviewing the GMK Tech M7 Pro. When that video is ready, you'll find it right here. Cheers!